Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. And uh, we're here at the last uh, uh, session for the search track for today at ApacheCon 2021. Um, and for the final talk of the day, we have Tim Potter and Apache Lucene Solar Committer and PMC member. Uh, Tim specializes in cloud native architecture and running large scale distributed uh, systems and Kubernetes and focuses on scalability, security, and stability of Apache Solar at Apple. Uh, Tim is also the co-author of Solar in Action. And today, Tim is uh, going to provide us with some actionable advice on building a world-class monitoring and alerting solution for mission-critical solar applications. So over to you, Tim. OK, great. Thanks, Ancham. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so for agenda-wise, um, pretty much going to dig into Prometheus and talk about sort of how that looks with solar cloud, uh, especially around using the solar operator. Uh, we'll look at the Grafana dashboards uh, for solar metrics. And then um, I want to wrap up with digging into alerting, which I think is, uh, you know, a really important topic. Uh, so for my part, I really kind of got interested in this topic out of necessity uh, because, you know, once you get through designing your collections and working through the various um, queries and, you know, your indexing strategy and all that, I would always get these questions like, great, we love the feature set, but how do you sort of monitor and run solar in production from an ops perspective? And a lot of times I found myself kind of just co coming up short there. I don't know if you've been in that position, but uh, so I really started just explore Prometheus um, Grafana, and then recently getting more into alerts and alert manager, right? And we'll get into that. So my, uh, my hope with this talk really is, A, I kind of pique your interest to start actually, you know, digging into these concepts yourself and doing more self-discovery. And then I also hope that like some of the committers will actually start to get more interested in these topics. But I think, because I think we can, there's still, you know, a lot to be done on the solar monitoring front. And I think there, this will be an area where we need to just continue to improve solar uh, as things go along. So to get started, again, I think this whole DevOps culture, lots of buzzwords, we all get it. But really for me, it's it, it comes down to kind of really requiring the de developers to understand uh, as well as to, to constantly improve really just how solar runs in production, right? And uh, so Prometheus, it's very popular in the Kubernetes ecosystem. That's the area I play in. So that's what this talk is really going to focus on. Uh, Prometheus is a time series database. So each sort of row in there is, um, you know, a millisecond um, precision metric. And then it has additional labels uh, that you can use for filtering and aggregation. And we'll see numerous examples of those throughout the talk. So again, labels just think of as dimensions, uh, right? And a simple one would be like the base URL of a solar, a solar node. Way Prometheus works is it is it pulls metrics from these uh, what are called exporters, right? And in Kubernetes, it's a service exporter. This happens over HTTP. Uh, you can run Prometheus in an HA mode. And, but the, the key there is each replica will kind of scrape the endpoints, right? There's no um, between the replicas themselves replication. Uh, they, they both do the same amount of work, right? And uh, Prometheus, all it's hundred percent open source, all components under it are released under Apache 2. So that's Prometheus, that's the core server. But more interestingly is this, what's called Prometheus stack, right? And, um, Essentially, it's a Helm chart that has all the components you need for just this robust monitoring alerting stack. So that includes Prometheus. Uh, there's a Prometheus operator. Uh, without getting too much into the weeds around that, there are different custom resources that extend the built-in types of Kubernetes uh, that the operator manages. We'll see uh, a couple of those in this talk, uh, namely service monitor, and that's how Prometheus will know which services to go pull metrics from. And then also alerting rules, right? There's also the alert manager. It's deployed as a stateful set in Kubernetes. Uh, there's Grafana. It's deployed as a deployment, which means it's stateless. Uh, but the 
dashboards themselves can be loaded uh, through a Kubernetes config map, which is pretty cool. And then there's also a daemon set which runs on every node in Kubernetes and that, that, that exports metrics about the nodes. It's called the node exporter. Uh, I won't dig into that today, but you know, it's, it's all the kind of low level node information you might want to track. Uh, the interesting thing about the Prometheus stack here is it's uh, really, really uh, customizable and configurable. And so my recommendation is as you get started, the best thing is actually fetch the Helm chart itself. Uh, Helm has a fetch command and um, in there you'll see values.yaml. And this is like all the variables of, of the Helm chart. And in this case, there are a lot of them. But what's great is the documentation in there is, is really good. And you can just basically go through the values YAML and um, see what's configurable, see the things you can change and work through. And that's a really good way to get started with the stack. Uh, for, for instance, here, uh, since it's a time series database, we have to think about, you know, how long are we, are we retaining the metrics? I think the default is 30 days. As you can see, I can override uh, parameters in the uh, Helm chart, such as the retention. I set it to five days locally. That's probably even too much for local, but um, you get the idea that you can control these variables. The other one there is actually, you need to change that uh, to be able to just load in custom rules like solo rules, which I'll show later um, without kind of bundling them in uh, with the Helm deployment. So that's the uh, Prometheus stack. Let's look a little bit about how uh, solar cloud gets metrics uh, into Prometheus. So the Apache solar operator is used to deploy solar cloud clusters, right? And you can have many of these. And, and the little image there, it's a bit of an eye chart, but the idea is to just show kind of all the different working uh, components that play together in a, in a solar deployment in Kubernetes. Uh, I actually did that diagram. Um, and uh, so there's some questions about that, but um, one of the one of the components also that the solar operator provides is what's called the Prometheus exporter. And so the exporter it runs as a separate process. It's a deployment, so there's typically uh, one pod for every solar cloud, and uh, it it goes out and scrapes every node, which it gets it gets the nodes from from Zookeeper every you know thirty seconds or whatever. Right, and it, and it hits uh, an endpoint in solar. And then what the uh, Prometheus exporter does is it transforms and it uses JQ, these really kind of um, fancy uh, JQ rules to transform the JSON into Prometheus format, right? That Prometheus can understand. And then um, it has an endpoint that Prometheus can hit. The way Prometheus then finds our Prometheus exporters is via this service monitor. And again, that is a CR custom resource that the Prometheus operator supports. And so what happens is uh, when you create a service monitor to expose your exporter, Prometheus will find that and pick that up. So it wouldn't be a useful Kubernetes talk if we didn't throw some YAML up. So on the left here, we have a simple Prometheus exporter definition. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, notice really in the spec, um, I point at which solar cloud I want this exporter to scrape metrics from. Um, typically also we recommend and make very easy enabling security as well as, well as uh, enabling TLS on solar. So Prometheus, since it's acting as a client to your solar cloud nodes, you know, it has to be able to authenticate and um, speak TLS or mutual TLS there. And then notice also there's a scrape interval, right? So how often do you want the exporter going to solar? So you can set that here. I'm using 30 seconds. And then the service monitor definition, uh, basically the way it works is it uses a, a label selector. In this case, it's finding the one on the left there, uh, the uh, dev prom exporter and it's using namespace. So Prometheus, the operator will use these service monitors to essentially go find uh, the endpoints that it wants to scrape. And then you wanna just go ahead and align the scrape interval um, there, 30 seconds as well. Okay, um, this would be something you would wanna do, you know, when you're ex uh, just experimenting with this technology stack is 
you can basically open up uh, port forward, the kubectl command there, to one of your Prometheus exporter pods, port 8080. Uh, and then you can um, hit it over curl, the metrics endpoint, and see the metrics that are coming out, right? So this is uh, this is behaving like uh, the Prometheus client scraping those metrics out there. It's not that interesting, but if there's maybe a problem in, in your um, Grafana dashboard or whatever, you might want to look at this to make sure the metrics are coming out as expected. Um, and then if you want to go on the solar side, so the Prometheus exporter itself actually hits you know, slash solar slash admin slash metrics, which returns uh, all the metrics for that node in JSON format. So what happens really is the exporter takes the JSON, applies all these um, crazy JQ uh, filters on those and transforms them into Prometheus uh, format. So uh, use these commands to kind of explore and look behind the scenes. Okay, so that's kind of how metrics get into Prometheus from Solar. Now let's talk about you know, how to visualize and use those. And the key here is, is, is Grafana, right? Grafana is a dashboarding tool. It, it, it works with uh, a number of different data sources, not just Prometheus, uh, but in, a, in our case, uh, Grafana, we're going to be hitting a Prometheus data source using what's called PromQL. Um, from Prometheus query language. Solar actually ships uh, with the default dashboard um, in the exporter contrib. Uh, I'll get more into that. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really uh, great starting point for looking at solar metrics uh, if you haven't deployed that. And then my recommendation is, again, you can use the Grafana UI to just upload the JSON, um, but the better way to do it is to actually store your dashboard in a config map and then um, use a label selector that Grafana can go find that dashboard, uh, that config map and load it in. Uh, Cause again, Grafana runs in Kubernetes as a stateless deployment. So the dashboards I think are, there's two ways to look at them. One would be sort of pre-production load performance testing. And that's where you can kind of spot misconfigurations, uh, you know, maybe unbalanced load. One node is just getting hammered while the others are snoozing. Um, you know, maybe incorrect resource allocation. Again, I think, um, you know, cluster sizing is still an unsolved problem. Um, but um, the dashboard will help you identify like, oh my gosh, like we don't seem to be, um, we don't have enough CPU or maybe the opposite, like we're not even uh, touching our nodes. So maybe we're running too much hardware. Uh, that's usually probably not, uh, um, it's usually the opposite problem or, or GC problems, right? And, and the dashboard will help you as you're doing load and performance testing, and you should be doing load performance testing pre-production. But more importantly, like once you go into production, the dashboards are great for display, but in a production scenario, you don't really care about that. We'll see once alerts start firing, that's where we want to ensure our dashboards can help the SREs, the ops people to actually do alert investigation. Okay, so um, Grafana dashboard, at the, at the bottom there, I kind of have a screenshot of that dashboard. And the first thing to notice is you can filter the, all the different uh, metrics uh, around these common labels that make sense for solar, right? So uh, base URL, you can you know, restrict and filter by collection or you down, down to core or the endpoint. And this is where, as I mentioned in Prometheus, so metrics come through, they have these labels, right? And the labels are these different dimensions. So you can filter. And the thing to remember is we've shipped this default dashboard. Uh, it's, it's really extensive. It has a number of different layers. There's probably 50 different graphs on there. And so if you have a big cluster with lots of collections, uh, lots of nodes, uh, my recommendation is actually just use the dashboard as a starting point and then kind of customize it, uh, maybe create, you know, um, separate dashboards that are a little bit more filtered uh, based on the views you need. Uh, you know, don't feel like you just have to use this dashboard as it comes out of the box, right? Like it, it's there as a starting point and all encompassing, and then you, you should crack, kind of customize it uh, according to your needs. So let's dig in uh, because I think it's helpful to see kind of how 
a graph. And in this case, on the right there, we're looking at uh, total QPS by node translates into, uh, you know, what happens behind the scenes. So um, in this case, we're looking at three nodes and the QPS coming into those nodes. In most cases, we want balance, right? Um, in terms of all the nodes are getting load balanced correctly. So here on the left, we have this QPS one minute rate that comes out of solar. The actual key here is solar metrics core query one minute rate. Um, and notice that we're doing a sum by, and re remember I mentioned that labels allow you, allow you to do um, filtering as well as aggregation. So we're going to aggregate by base URL. That's our, that's our label for node. Um, we're going to basically sum up all the, all the QPS values uh, for that node. Uh, it's, this is like similar to a SQL group by, right? Where um, we're going to group by base URL, this metric, and then display it, right? So um, I didn't show how to actually get to this to this configured expression, but if you click on each, the top part of each graph, uh, you'll be able to do edit, and then you'll see this this expression. And this is this is a uh, prom QL expression uh, to get the metrics for this graph, right? Um, and the other thing to notice are these these different labels in green, and right, and those are those are um, Kubra, uh, sorry, Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, like Regex. Uh, they'll default to like no filter, but you can see where the filters get applied. Like if I want to just um, uh, filter by collection or uh, replica or what have you, that's the expression for doing it. Uh, let's take a look at another one because I think um, it helps show like you don't have to do aggregation in this case. We're looking at QPS per core, the one minute rate. And again, looking for a nice balance. Um, and uh, here we have the core. So this is again, a metric coming straight out of solar, solar metrics core query, one minute rate. There's no aggregation, uh, but you could do filtering if you want it, right? And again, you're looking for a really good balance of uh, requests between the cores there. Okay. Uh, here's another solar metric example. And um, in this case, we're going to keep track. Uh, we want to keep track of sort of available disk space per pod, right? Like running out of disk on a node, super, super bad thing, right? Um, Lucene doesn't like it. It just causes lots of headaches, can corrupt indexes, just really bad. So this is like key. You don't want to, uh, you don't want this to happen. And we'll see how to actually, you know, keep use this same expression to build alerting around this. Um, so in this case, we're doing an aggregation and we're going to basically group by base URL and item. So one of the things you have to learn about how solar structures the metrics that flow into Prometheus is it uses item kind of as this generic bucket. Um, and in this case, item is either total space or usable space, but it varies based on the metric type, right? So we have core FS bytes. Um, and then it breaks down item is total space or usable space, right? We're taking the min because um, we want to uh, be alerted when uh, that gets too small, right? In this case, um, I have total space and usable space is 47 gig. I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape there. I don't remember which cluster I took this off of, but uh, probably just something off EKS. But again, so you can craft these aggregations however you want and display them. Okay, so key solar metrics that you can get uh, in, in uh, Grafana would be sort of query performance, right? Like um, QPS, P95, or any of your uh, quantiles that you're uh, uh, interested in around uh, query performance, and then also Keep an eye on balance across replicas. One of the things I've seen in a lot of clusters is, again, like uh, one node maybe just getting too many requests and, um, you know, others may not be being utilized, uh, especially if you're running in the cloud where, you know, you're, you're paying a lot for, for the resources you consume. You want to make sure balance is, is, is critical there. And so um, 
the the metrics you want to pay uh, pay attention are like I showed in the examples, um, you know, balance across the replicas or the cores uh, of these different QPS metrics. There's also metrics around cache behavior, right? So um, what's your eviction rate, uh, warming time? These are important because, you know, maybe maybe your caches aren't sized appropriately, right? Or warming time, that could be one where it's like you're spending just too much time uh, warming up a new searcher, you know, warming, rewarming the caches um, and something to be aware of. That one, again, depends on how often your soft commit rate is and that sort of thing. But um, uh, it's a key. It's, it's, I think it's really important to keep an eye on cache behavior and the metrics around that. I think indexing performance and commit rates speak for themselves. Another one to just, I think, keep uh, emphasize there is like um, I've seen times where clients are allowed to send commits and they're just committing too often. Right. And, and that's one where maybe you end up using the the ignore uh, and just relying on the auto configured um, soft and hard commits in solarconfig.xml for your and just ignore commits that come from clients. There's actually um, a request processor update request processor that you could wire up for your collections. It's called the ignore is something. Um, and it, it allows you to basically turn off clients, the ability to, to issue commits and, and guard your clusters. So again, keep an eye on those kind of things. GC activity and health. This is a huge one, especially again, as we'll, we'll start to talk in a moment around alerts, but you know, GC activity, I, I think I don't have to tell those that have run solar in production, like this is the one you typically want to dive into first just to see how uh, GC is behaving. Um, if you have your heap sized correctly, that sort of thing. Um, and, and I talked about disk usage and CPU, I think is is pretty straightforward. So um, to so basically to summarize, all these metrics that you that I kind of mentioned here, they're all represented on the Grafana dashboard, right? But these are the ones I would really um, initially as you're dipping your toe into monitoring solar. Uh, these are the areas that I think are probably the most important to kind of dig into. Okay, so that is, um, you know, Grafana dashboards. And again, I think the dashboards are great uh, when you're doing pre-production testing, um, but they're really more important for once alerts start firing, your SREs, ops people, and in your org, that might be, you might, you know, be the same person as the search engineer. Um, but the SRZs and ops people will come in and start to use that dashboard to figure out like what the systems look like leading up to the events. Um, you know, was it a slow degradation or a crazy spike, you know, and try to then start to do investigation. So uh, let's talk about alerting. So really the first thing I think about alerts is that you really want to ensure that they're actionable. And I'm showing a couple links here. These are these are really good. Um, the SRE book from Google, it's a workbook. It gets a bit esoteric uh, at times um, being Google, but uh, it, really, really good knowledge in there and kind of advice around kind of just how to think about alerting and tying it to your service level objectives right? And error budgets and all these kind of things. Um, so I, I highly recommend reading that. Um, and then there's also like at this uh, prompt tools alerts, um, some nice examples there on kind of how to set up various alerts, right? But the key thing is you want to ensure you set up rules that uh, kind of are actionable. Again, you don't want to be paging people in the middle of the night um, for things that really, you know, will end up working themselves out. Like there's a lot of code and logic in solar, obviously to um, heal replicas, replicas can recover and that sort of thing. Uh, you add Kubernetes into the mix there and pods will restart and replicas will um, sync up and, and you know, uh, replicate from their leader and heal and all those kind of things. So a lot of the time just alerts will work themselves out, right? Um, so, these alerts are actually rules 
uh, and we'll see some examples. They're defining YAML. And the key here to, the, to, to keep in mind is actually rules are evaluated by the Prometheus server, right? And not, um, not the alert manager. We'll get into what alert manager does in a second. But so Prometheus is the one that actually um, evaluates all these rules and then generates alerts based, based on those rules by looking at the metrics, right? The state of the metrics that are coming out of solar. And on the Kube side, there is this custom CRD, uh, which is implemented by the Prometheus operator, comes in that Prometheus stack. These Prometheus rules. So if you want to look at them, you can basically um, uh, get CRD and then the Prometheus rule. Um, and that's the name of it there. And, and put that out as YAML, right? So. So Prometheus server is like the client to alert manager and its job is to basically send alerts as they fire uh, to the alert manager. So, so what does alert manager do? Uh, alert manager first off is responsible for grouping. Um, and so you can imagine in a really large cluster, there could be lots of alerts firing, um, but you don't want to say, send a thousand slacks to your slack channel like you probably just need one right or one based on kind of um, the type of alert so to speak um, and so alert manager will group and dedupe all these alerts according to to labels and we'll get more into that in a second but um uh again the idea there is you just want to make sure uh, you're you're sending as few alerts as um acceptable Right. So another one would be inhibition. Best example I can give here is imagine in a solar cluster that like zookeeper goes down. Well, that is obviously going to trigger a whole lot of other alerts on the solar side. Right. Like um, it's going to look like solar is in really bad shape because, frankly, solar will be in a very bad shape because uh, zookeeper zookeepers down. But the actual core of the problem, the alert we need to respond to first and most importantly is the zookeeper one, right? So inhibition allows us to configure these rules um, that it's basically say, we don't need to fire a thousand things about a bad solar cluster because zookeeper's down. That's the crux of the problem. So uh, again, this takes some thinking on your part and I'll get more into that in a second, but inhibition really allows us to kind of link rules together and say, you know, don't fire these if this one's happening. Uh, which I think is very useful, especially as we start to scale clusters and get more complicated uh, in terms of how we deploy solar. And then the last one is um, rowdy. So you can imagine, you know, maybe P75 is getting a little slow. Um, P95, I don't know. Um, some, some, some query latency metric that like, it's it's concerning, but it's probably not like, Pants on fire, you know, pay, uh, page the CRDs in the middle of the night, the SREs in the middle of the night. Um, so we might want to just send those alerts to Slack um, to for someone to, to deal with that's on call, when, you know, when they get around to it. Um, and then there's just like, again, zookeepers down. So we want to hit pager duty. So alert manager's job is to basically allow you to configure all these different receivers. Uh, and I think there's about a dozen uh, out of the box that, that um, alert manager supports. It also just supports kind of like uh, just custom webhook uh, uh, endpoints, uh, and then you know all the standard pager duty, Slack, email that you would expect. There's also a plugin model that allows you to build um, your own receiver, so to speak. Um, so it's pretty extensive. The 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 um, the receiver notification model, and so Alert Manager really allows us to control uh, routing of alerts to the proper receivers. Okay, so here is a screenshot. This actually is not a screenshot of Alert Manager. Uh, the title is a little bit misleading, but this is actually showing, um, this is a screenshot from Prometheus's UI. And what it's trying to depict are um, this alert called solar high heap usage, right? and then various labels so right you see you see the base url so that's going to tell you what node is having high heap usage 
excuse me. And then also you can have other labels such as in this case, you know, heap usage is probably impacting performance, severity major. These labels is what actually allow you to do grouping, right? So you can group like all your performance alerts and send those to Slack. Um, or you could group by severity and critical always go to pager duty, right? So you get the idea. Um, the other thing I want to point out is in this description. So the heap usage is over 90% for 15 minutes. So the 15 minutes is really critical. It's called the interval for the rule. And so uh, Prometheus won't actually fire that into alert manager until, until this, this uh, essentially alert has been um, firing for this sustained amount of time. In this case, 15 minutes. Uh, that might be a little extreme for high heap usage. Um, maybe you do five minutes there or whatever, but that interval is like, it has to basically keep happening for that amount of time before an alert is raised, right? And that's really important because a couple of things. One, solar, again, is, is rather good and robust about uh, trying to recover from certain things, right? Um, Improper heap, it may not be able to recover from, but you know, replicas being down, which would impact QPS and, and latencies and things like that, it can typically typically recover from those fairly quickly. Um, so you wanna have kind of a graceful uh, interval there, right? Okay, so let's talk solar alerting rules specifically. I have this vision, and this is going to be one of my projects for for the you know the next year going forward is to start building kind of a base set of rules that should ship with solar, right? And think of them more as like rule templates because I think the thresholds that that are important are really use case and organization specific, as well as these intervals that I mentioned, right? Like five minutes of high heap mess, uh, uh, five minutes of high heap might be fine for your org, but, you know, a complete disaster for another org. So again, uh, I want to ship a set of rules and then let people customize on top of that, the, the, the actual specific tolerances and thresholds. Um, and the other thing there is, uh, speaking about like running solar on Kubernetes. So, uh, the Prometheus stack itself, and that's why I recommended earlier, you go with Prometheus stack because it actually includes um, a really extensive suite of default rules around common Kubernetes issues. And the link I provide here actually is really useful for just kind of like um, seeing how rules are constructed, how, how they work, um, and then also kind of the, all the bad things that the Kubernetes ecosystem have figured out as common Kubernetes issues. So you can actually go into these rules and there's a lot of them. Um, and you know they're great for just having built in, because one thing you'll see in at least especially in larger larger organizations, uh, if you're a small org, you're probably the Kube administrator, the solar administrator, the search engineer, uh, and the relevancy tuner. But um, in a lot a lot of bigger organizations, you'll have a set of SREs that probably take care of Kubernetes, right? And then you might have some specific solar ops SREs type type people. Um, and so these rules, they'd be handled by your Kube SREs. And then, uh, you know, you'd have your, your solar specific SREs. Um, the other really important thing about these alerts, and this is another kind of project I want to do and hope I, uh, you know, we as a community can start to um, improve on this is every alert really should have a link to what is called a run book for solar, right? So um, in this example here in the screenshot below, let's see, I'm showing high query latency, so P95. Um, in this case, I said P95 is uh, 10. That might be a little extreme, but, um, uh, and, the, and then notice the four there is set to 30 seconds. That's, I, I, I hacked that. Uh, for the example here, so I could get it to fire. Um, it, in the right there, you can see the value, it's over a second. Um, but really that would be like five minutes or 10 minutes. But in this case, this shows what Prometheus would show as far as the rule is firing. Um, 
its value is you know 1100 and change the the actual expression there max collection right is greater than 10 so that's again just a prometheus uh query expression um and i want to mention remember that the solar uh, grafana dashboard is a gold mine for actually figuring out all the prometheus expressions so you don't have to go and like become a prometheus expression uh, uh expert just go look at the 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 solar dashboard that comes out of you know out of the box and you'll get the expression basically for all of um all the core metrics that are important then of course you need to wire in the thresholds in this case like 10 seconds right so the um this rule is firing. And then the kick kicker here is this run book URL. So what you want is like a link to a run book that then describes like what, what this possibly means and then a su su uh, suggested course of action. Um, of course, you're not gonna be able to come up with like all of this uh, on your own. Um, but I think as a community, uh, you know, as the solar community, we have a, a just a wealth of knowledge. And so in my mind, I see this kind of almost like run book template that we could ship say with um, a base set of rules that come with the, the Apache solar operator. Cause again, I, I wanna build all this around Kubernetes and the solar operator and the Prometheus stack. Um, but essentially we have a kind of a getting started run book for solar and then you customize um, uh, as you go, right? And this, that, that to me would be uh, a really powerful thing to have for the solar community as we go forward. So uh, let's take a good, uh, look at an example, um, example rules for solar. So on the left, actually, this is not for solar, but I thought it was interesting. This is uh, one of the alerts that come um, in the Prometheus stack for Kubernetes in general. Um, but I think it's really useful just to look at it. So the alert is called kubepod not ready. Um, there's some annotation which gets displayed in the UI. And then you would want to link to the run book. Like, what do you do if solar, if there's one solar pod that hasn't um, come back in, in, the, in the threshold? And here, you, if, you, if you scroll down, the, the four is set to one hour. Again, that might be a little bit extreme. You might want 30 minutes if a pod's not ready. Um, you know, again, solar can take a long time if it has to uh, do a lot of startup work. And again, the labels here, you see severity critical. So that's where you can, again, group by that label and say all critical alerts are going to go to pager duty, right? Um, and so on the right here, this is like P95 query latency. Um, notice that the kind is Prometheus rule. And that, again, should tell you that is a custom resource. Um, if you recall the prometheus operator is what sort of implements that kind right and um in the spec here we have groups so you would group rules by like you know these are my query related rules or these are my indexing performance uh, related rules uh or maybe you have rules around backup and restore what you know various kind of i'd say classifications of rules related to solar functionality and then under the uh, under the rules, we have a nice alert called solar high query latency. Um, and then again, a nice little uh, message description. And notice you can actually use the, the labels on the metric, right? So in this case, uh, you can get the collection name in the message. So it displays nicely in the UI. And then obviously a link uh, to the run book for that problem, right? So you can imagine your SRE is going to get this alert, come in. The first thing they're going to do is click on that link to the run book and start to investigate, right? And then they'll probably go into the Grafana dashboard and the run book might actually have a link to the appropriate Grafana dashboard, right? And so uh, really help your SREs be able to kind of very quickly do their exploration. The expression here would be um, your um, uh, standard prom QL, right? So we're going to just do max by collection, that's an aggregation, uh, greater than uh, 100 uh, milliseconds in this case for 10 minutes, right? And again, we would use the labels here to route this alert to the proper channel. Maybe it goes to Slack, 
uh, depending on how you know how critical uh, P95 is for your org, maybe it goes to pager duty. Okay, uh, so you're not expected to be able to like write these, um, you know, just without testing. So in the Kubra, uh, sorry, in the Prometheus UI, there's actually a way to uh, test your rules out, right? And um, so you can basically put in an expression, and then the output will be in this case. So I'm doing, you know. P95 greater than 10, and then you can see what came out of that was my SOP2 um, collection, and it's running at 68.7 and change, right? So the, the cool thing here is that you can test out these rules and the expressions right in the Prometheus um, UI. It's very handy. The key is in when you're running in Kubernetes, you have to do a port forward to the Prometheus pod. Uh, on uh, port 9090. Okay, um, here's another example of a uh, rule. I think the, um, the only thing I was really trying to show here is you can basically come out of these expressions and do basic math, right? So I'm kind of doing um, some uh, math on sort of heap bytes used and maxed, right? So if we're really kind of using greater than 90% um, for 15 minutes, then of course I wanna, I wanna raise that, right? And that could be an indication of um, GC's running, but it's really not being able to collect all the memory. So maybe there's just, you know, a, a, a problem that's, that's kind of growing over time. Um, and then you can see, again, this is in my, uh, the, the lower screenshot here, this is in the tester. So I just put this expression in. And again, I'm, I'm using uh, item there. Uh, item's kind of a, a generic bucket in some of the solar metrics. Um, doing the math and testing it out. And then I immediately see um, the metrics that, that basically meet that criteria. I probably changed the, um, greater than zero and nine to something smaller, just to uh, just to experiment. And you can see that I get um, the base URL, which is a solar label, as well as like the pod, which uh, you'll get some, some basic Kubernetes uh, labels as well on these. So, okay. So with that, I think I'm pretty much uh, done, Ansham. Um, are there any questions? Thank you, Tim. Uh that was a great session and very informative. And we have a bunch of questions. Um, uh -oh. So the first one is how well does it scale, both performance and in terms of looking at the UX of seeing metrics from tens or hundreds of thousands of nodes. So I guess usability and in general scalability. Yeah, so uh, tackling the scalability question first. So, um, as far as I understand, like uh, Prometheus is incredibly scalable. Like they claim their pull model makes it more scalable. Again, you can have multiple replicas um, and that sort of thing. Again, you start with kind of proper sizing and running Prometheus on on a good um, on a good size node and things like that. But um, you know, there are organizations, mine included, that run very large, uh, you know, run Prometheus against very large clusters. So I think Prometheus uh, kind of checks all the boxes on scalability. Uh, you would have a Prometheus exporter per solar cloud. So one of the recommendations uh, we have with the solar operator is rather than having just one massive solar cloud with hundreds of collections, like you can actually break that down into you know multiple solar clouds with less collections and less complexity you know it used to be kind of hard to manage um, solar clouds so you ended up seeing really complicated solar uh, uh, clusters our recommendation now with kubernetes and the operator is just have more solar cloud objects with fewer collections right and then you'll have a prometheus exporter for each one right and so that i think will help the actual you know scalability of the Prometheus exporter and all, and all that um, on the terms of 
scalability. Now, Grafana, the dashboard, as I mentioned, is almost too complicated and has too many metrics. So really, as you scale and have a lot of clusters and a lot of collections, you're going to want to break that dashboard up into more specific dashboards, right? With like filter set for, you know, high, very important collections or um, different different sets of metrics. And that will really help you kind of scale. Because if you have a huge solar cluster and you try to like open up the default, it's going to be really laggy and it's going to it's going to kill your browser. So you're going to have to break that up at some point. But if you do that, I think, you know, again, you can get you can kind of get that sweet spot. OK, great. The uh, second question is uh, from Andy that says, uh, the question says, Grafana also handles alerting. What led you to choose Prometheus alerting versus Grafana's? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I did a lot of research and a uh, couple things. One is Grafana alerting, as far as I know, kind of um, it's more for really small, simple kind of use cases. Um, and pretty much even the Grafana folks say like, once you start to kind of build up, um, a complicated set of rules and, um, as I mentioned, like different receivers and all that, uh, the way to go is Prometheus and alert manager. And then the other answer there is kind of just expediency because the Prometheus stack actually comes with alert manager, well-configured, and then all the Kubernetes rules, as well as like hooks for being able to create your you know custom solar rules so i think it's just more of a robust solution whereas grafana um alerts are more for a kind of very trivial use cases um and and, and that and i haven't i personally don't have a lot of experience with grafana's alerting but a lot of the research i did was that you know prom is just a lot more robust of a solution so you know especially with solar and clusters getting larger and larger, I think it's the way to go, but definitely. Good okay. So now we have three questions and let's give it two minutes total so that oh, we're done with this. Uh, so the first question is, does solar still require to run separate service to export Prometheus metrics? Yes. Uh, and so that's the, the Prometheus exporter. Um, it's, and, and, and really, there, I believe there's a JIRA and there's been some talk of just basically having solar be able to expose an endpoint that is just, you know, Prometheus exposition format um, out of the box. Uh, that does not exist. I think, you know, Houston and I have, have talked about it at times about, you know, let's take that on. But for right now, you still need to run the Prometheus exporter. Okay. So then the next question, is there a way... Uh, question from Vincent, is there a way uh, to have alert manager fire an alert based on specific events from the solar logs instead of uh, from the metrics? Uh, you know what, there is a, I forget the name of the plugin, but there is a way to, oh, it's called um, mTail and it's from Google. Um, so check out mTail, which is like metrics tail that can harvest log, that can like process logs and generate Prometheus metrics um so you wouldn't it, it it has to end up being a metric in prometheus that's how prometheus alerts work but you can get prometheus metrics out of logs using this mtail thing okay you're just piping stuff in finally it's going to be coming from the metrics but it's going to be get piped exactly okay uh and oh there was a follow-up question i think which says and in this case what is your choice of tool for log management or log base i think your answer covered that uh in the case of if you wanted to have your logs trigger alerts what was your uh, uh tool of choice yeah, for log management? Tail. and then as far as log infrastructure i'll refrain from answering that because it's <laughs> it's a slippery slope <laughs> uh, there are a lot of really excellent uh, tools out there in the kubernetes space Great. Oh, we really got done with all the questions we got, but I guess Tim's going to be sticking around uh, at the conference the next couple of days. So feel free to find him. Thank you, Tim, for doing this uh, and taking the time to present. Um, and uh, just another announcement uh, at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, or 2030 hours UTC, 
at the uh, at the Apple sponsor booth, there's going to be uh, the, t- the same time as Birds of Feather. There's going to be uh, a general discussion with Apple employees about what open source at Apple feels like, what what it uh, what that world looks like. So if anyone's interested, uh, that'd be a nice place to hang out and listen in. Great. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ansham. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you all tomorrow and at the Apple booth later today. Yes. Right. Yeah. Bye.